Yeah, I th what you were saying earlier about discipling, mm -hmm. that the, I think it's unique that the first and the last uh, job description Jesus gave to disciples was discipling. And I, mm. like I shared earlier, my own experience in evangelistic efforts is that it has, it has helped me to grow as much or more than anybody. And I really feel like that's part of what Jesus built the church that way on purpose, that in order for us to grow um, and to mature and to achieve stability and all that, that um, that identity of going out and leading other people is it's an integral part of that, and we're not going to grow in our own health unless we are constantly having that challenge of being put in a place where we have to explain to people what it means to follow Jesus and help them walk through things. That's where we get a lot of for our own lives. Uh, Paul says that to Timothy that if you keep the brethren in remembrance of these things, you yourself will be nourished up through that. You're going to be nourished up in the words of faith and sound doctrine. And I guess uh, the question, why Chambersburg? Um, I like what Patrick said, why not Chambersburg? I mean, why, <laughs> yeah. why do yeah. we think that somehow we can go to L.A. and, and you know, these big places where there's, uh, there's the same things present here in Chambersburg. There's sex trafficking, there's drugs, there's gang activity. It's just not on a, as, 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 um, as wide of a scale or nearly as dramatic. And so I'm not sure why we think we can go and somehow make something happen there when we can't in our in our in our smaller towns the other thing is i i would like to see i feel like god wants to see the term missions disappear from our vocabulary because every christian every church should be a mission church and if we're not if we're not engaging the world around us at a spiritual level i feel like it's a reflection on our own on our own spiritual health our own what it, our own discipleship of christ and following christ so that, that's part of Personally, my, my, my uh, outlook on the whole thing is, is we all should be looking around us and saying, where, how can we engage our society on a meaningful level and, and show Jesus to them? Is sustainability. If I go somewhere for two weeks and I leave, how can I sustain that? Mm -hmm. It's required that other people go do that. You need the indigenous people from the area to build this thing, yeah. indigenous churches. You know, it's really nice to show up to Puerto Rico and say, I'm like cotton candy and they want to eat it. But mm -hmm. when, they when I leave, what are they going to do? Mm -hmm. You have to walk with the people. Christ did that. Mm -hmm. That's what he did. He walked with you. Mm -hmm. He didn't walk away from you. Yeah. So. Yeah. Basically, you're advocating not missions, moving in and just being there, mm -hmm. you know. Um, one of the things... I run a thing called Harkin House Ministry, which is a halfway house for ex-convicts. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the things I realized growing up in a way I did, I'm watching all these people around me do devotions and I'm going, so I would go over to their house and they're like, let's do devotion, what? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I never did that. So I had this idea that if I start a halfway house, I'll learn about devotions. And I went to the men and I said, I need to learn about devotions. Will you help teach me? Mm -hmm. And now they're involved because they're an intricate part of this. Yeah. And that's, I like the idea of an organic, not an organized thing. Um, mm -hmm. Organic, it grows out of a need. Or organized, what happens mm -hmm. is you think they have a need and you put your mm -hmm. emphasis on what you think they need. Mm -hmm. I, I need it, devotions in my life. I need to know how to serve Christ daily, every morning. Mm -hmm. And so, I asked them to help me, and it's succeeding so far. Mm -hmm. I, I think in another conversation, you had said something about wanting to start a, a plain church among the soup kitchen constituency. Mm -hmm. talk, talk to us a little bit about that. Why are you thinking that particular demographic instead of, say, I don't know, middle class Americans? In Chambersburg here, we have many churches, and they're serving the needs of the middle class and upper class people. Mm -hmm. And the unfortunate thing, I was having a conversation with someone. Um, and he said that he wants to disciple mid and upper class people. And I told him, that's a really cool thing. But when you disciple upper and upper class people, people in the street can't see that. But if you work with street people, the people in the mid to upper class can see mm. what you're doing. I think we have an upside down view of discipleship. Mm -hmm. It starts with the people who are involved in your life. I'm a criminal. Mm -hmm. 
So I hang out with criminals. Mm -hmm. And you know, my, my heart is drawn to people who are from my past. So mm -hmm. I want to disciple the people that I know. And you know, I can go anywhere in this town and people know who I am. And it's because they feel the love that I have for them. Mm -hmm. And if we're only getting together on Sundays, we're really not doing anything more than just visiting. Mm -hmm. And I think if we open our doors and bring these people into our lives and on an ongoing basis, we build relationships that can go further. And that, I think, is a sustainable view of discipleship, not mm -hmm. an abstract view. Mm -hmm. Bill? Mm -hmm. Yeah, again, that's, it's not like we think that this is the, the, um, you know, the ultimate demograph to reach or that it's an easy one by any means or anything like that. It's just simply for Patrick, it was the people that he was part of. For me, it was an open opportunity and in a lot of ways from my own, my own life story, uh, I can connect with a lot of these people. I've been through some of the kind of things that they've been through. And so it's just, it's, it's what's here. Um, and I, we're, we're totally open to middle, middle class people coming in. We've actually had um, some people come in, uh, like for the Bible study and things like that. Um, who had a job, had a had, you know, had their own apartment, and weren't necessarily the normal run of the mill that comes in here. So it's not like we're trying to isolate something. It's just something that, like Patrick, started with the people that he was, the crowd he was, he had been part of, um, his own life story, and we've just tried to do something with with the opportunities God's put in our lap. Yeah. The unfortunate part of coming from a bad demographics is you get pegged into one specific spot, mm -hmm. and I find people talk to me, they think oh, homeless. The reality is. I have the ability to talk to people that went to Harvard and sustain wow. a conversation to a degree, not perfection. I can carry a conversation on with the county commissioners who are friends of mine. They know the crime that I committed and they still talk to me. And I'm able to go to across all demographics. Mm -hmm. It's just right now, I, you know, Christ, I remember them saying, when did I feed you? When did I give you water? Mm -hmm. When did I visit you in jail? When you visit the least of me, you've done it to mm -hmm. me. And mm -hmm. that ra resounds in my mind all the time. Mm -hmm. And I kind of guess that's my drive. Yeah, going to the least of these. Yeah, because yep. yeah, that is a specific, that well, is something Jesus very specifically points out in many times in his ministry, going to the least of these. I grew up in a town that I literally grew up on the other side of the tracks. Hmm. Rich people were over there, and I was on the side of the tracks where the Irish class, low class person lived. Mm -hmm. So I always wanted to cross over that track to, f to feel a part of a community, and the reality is I would never fit into that community. Mm -hmm. And it's a lot said about my Christianity and my life. I don't need to cross the tracks anymore. I find mm -hmm. that the people that God wants you to work with will show up. Mm -hmm. it's, there was a movie called Fields of Dream field of dreams and it said build it and they will come and the premise behind that was this stupid little room mm -hmm. this little room was destroyed ripped up tore up you I redid this entire building and I know where every piece in this place came from because I remember mm -hmm. the person putting it our our mission in the early stages was if we're doing work in the bathroom and somebody came in limping the work was secondary, the person's primary. Mm -hmm. And I think the reason our volunteers get a little upset, this wall here was <laughs> hit by a truck. A, a truck ran into the room and destroyed everything, and it's almost a year later. It's actually because, 15 months later. Huh? <laughs> it's actually 15, 14, 15 months later. Yeah. <laughs> but the primary goal of the per people that come in here are more important than the work mm -hmm. still mm -hmm. stands. Mm -hmm. Job was allowed to go through these trials and tribulations, but God had a hand of protection. When the guy ran through the window, it was an impossible situation. He came around the corner, somehow turned 90 degrees, knocked two cars out, and came through the front of this building, but didn't hit the structural members. Wow. So the wall was just there. And that night, I, I talked to the local code guy. I said, can we have a Bible study? And he said, yeah, go ahead. Clean it up, but not. And we Whoa. kept going. Wow. We didn't let that stop. If that truck was five inches one way or five inches the other way, the entire building, the roof would have come down. Mm -hmm. And I think God has his hand of protection on this room. And I think Satan, in a lot of mm -hmm. ways, doesn't like what's going on here. Yeah. yeah. It's like you've created a little embassy of light. 
Yeah. I like that. Mm -hmm. You know, I remember people coming here, sitting on the steps, and the owner of the building looked at me and, oh, why don't you throw them off the step? And I said, if they feel safe, that's all that matters. Mm. Um, yeah. And I think God's love radiates out of this building. Mm -hmm. Call me a dreamer, but I think people in town, like, we've not been, somebody stole one drill five years ago, and the participants in town made the guy bring it back. I mean, wow. a friend of mine had a phone. He left it at Domino's Pizza, and it was two hours later, and I made a phone call, and I said, I'd like that phone back, and they brought it back, and they, I gave mm. it to the guy. There's something that's happening in this room that the people in the town recognize. Mm -hmm. So yeah. with that momentum, we're trying more, and that's where Bill comes in. Mm -hmm. I like that theme, the embassy, embassy of light, and that's what I feel like every, every home, every, every church should be as a as an embassy, a place where the interests of the kingdom of God are are furthered in the area, and where people can come and experience um, the way of life of, of the kingdom of God. I really like that. The subject of, of fruit and all that. Um, well, we've, we've said that. Yeah, we don't have like a lot of people that look like good Mennonites sitting in the pews, um, but the fruit is when we see people learning. When I feel like people are seeing Jesus here. Um, when they can come and they can open up, they can learn to trust. That's a huge thing. Um, and what we're starting to see is people, people come in here, they get mad and mm -hmm. they leave. But we're seeing that turnover of them getting mad, leaving, coming back, getting down to uh, one day. They'll say, they'll literally cuss us out, stomp out and come back the next day and say, you know, you guys are, you're telling the truth in here. Um, and that, that to me is, that's, 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 the, uh, that's the affirmation that I need to simply, that if I can sow Jesus, I can, I can live toward them like Jesus would, and I can speak his kind of words to them. Um, the fruit is really up to him. Um, and and it's, it's, like you said, that's a, a big key in uh, any sort of evangelism type of work is longevity. Um, the, the stories of the person that gets handed a tract on the street and you know, says a prayer and, and their life turns around, those, those happen. But by and large, it's not, not the way it works. It's, it's a long-term investment. Um, where we keep sowing, we keep watering, and, and we learn. We, we, we keep learning. That, and, and God, the increase that comes out of that is, is up to God. And I also, I want to say this, because we talked about, about um, going to L.A. and things like that. I do not in any way want to put down somebody who goes out and passes out tracks or holds up signs or, you know, goes to L.A. I've, I've done a lot of those things. That, some of those kind of things is where I, I, I began to learn and got my feet wet and... Um, you know, I listened to Ray Comfort for a long time, and, and that's what prompted me. I felt I could tell the story of the first time I, I realized God wanted me to step out and make a conversation instead of waiting for people to come talk to me. So I, I don't want to put down any of, any of those things, but I really feel like the way of discipling, um, building relationships with people, and um, walking with them through the change and the growth God wants to do in their life, that's, that's how any sort of a long-term fruit is going gonna, is gonna to happen. And it's not easy. <laughs> Yeah, no kidding. Yeah. The principle of the compound interest principle in a sin-driven life. Okay, mm -hmm. that's an abstract thought. But what chews somebody apart in financial things is not the debt. It's the interest from the debt. And the lives that people come in here, they have interest in their sin-driven life, which is pornography, which causes breakup of marriage, which causes fornication. And all those things are tied together. And what we're simply doing is mm -hmm. standing there in a way they call tough love, saying, no, we're not going to budge. Someone asked, last night asked him, she wanted to participate in communion last night, which we mm -hmm. practice with our volunteers here. And the first time in my life, I had to say no. And I had to explain to her why. I don't know where you are spiritually. And I think if I mm -hmm. give you communion and freely, freely do that, then I'm bringing some negative things towards myself. Mm -hmm. And she didn't understand that. She said, well, you, you, you're, um, what did she say? Judging yeah, you're judging me. I said, I don't judge you. I'm not judging you. I just, I don't know you well enough. And that particular person was uncomfortable with it, but we'll stand mm. firm in what Christ says mm -hmm. and explain the best we can. And then the next time we'll explain it a little bit better because Bill will come to me and say, I don't like how you did that, or I like how you did that. It's mm -hmm. a combined effort. There's a couple of our volunteers in here 
and they're intricate parts of this room because we work as a collaborative effort, one mm -hmm. accord, I believe. Yeah, you know, I got a nod back there, but good. <laughs> it's, it's harmony, it's unity and diversity. Yep. Yeah. But that, yeah. that exact, that, that, that example there, she said, well, I'm never coming back here. I guarantee you she'll be back sometime in the next week, if not maybe two weeks, but I'm pretty sure probably even in the next week because she knows that we care about her. We've spent yeah. time with her, yeah. we've helped her out with stuff, and she doesn't have that anywhere else. She knows this is a safe place. We're going to give her good advice. We're going to help her make, take positive steps in her life. And you have her best interest in mind. Right. Yeah. And I and people people can see through if there's a, if there's an agenda, and if you guys truly genuinely, I have your best interest in mind, 100 percent the whole way through. That, I mean that you you can't disguise that you know. So how do we take this package that mm -hmm. a group of renegades? start it and pass it on to another little town somewhere in like Topeka, Iowa or mm -hmm. somewhere in Idaho. How, would, how do we get this to grow? Yeah, that's, I, that was exactly, that's what I wanted to ask you. And, and if, I think, I mean, you know, a lot of people watch these, listen to these episodes. I think they need to know how to get a hold of you and maybe get some advice because I, I, I believe that the vision you're doing here is, could have, massive ripple effect if people would catch the vision. Uh, well, see, I, I was telling you about something, the practical application of something. See, mm -hmm. in our communities, we have theoretical people. We have a think tank. They can tell you everything about that, and they mm -hmm. can describe it to you, but they've not practically did it. And I just used that vision uh, when the Egyptians were escaping from Egypt, and they were going to the Promised Land. There was the Red Sea in front of them. And it was there until somebody went, oh, and put their foot in the water and it opened. Mm -hmm. So um, what I'm trying to get across is you have to be willing to step out. And it's going to cost a little bit. You will go through heartache and all mm -hmm. that. But the reality is I'm much better where I am here now mm -hmm. than I was 20 years ago. And what it took was a group of people, plain Christians, who see me for who I am today, not what I did on paper. Mm -hmm. And that kind of love drew me in. And that's mm -hmm. the kind of love that will draw these people in your town in. Mm -hmm. um, I, one thing that I'm, I'm concerned about is, is how much we try to duplicate other movements. I feel like as Anabaptist people, we have we've made a big mistake of that. We have gone back and tried to mimic things that, have, that people have done in the last 400 years in an effort to following, following Jesus the original Anabaptists were going back and trying to learn how to follow Jesus. And so what I'm saying is if people look at us and try to duplicate what we're doing, it's, it's going to be a flop. It's not going to work. Patrick doesn't live in Topeka, Idaho, or was it Iowa? Whatever. Um, and, and, and so, but, but, but following the core of Jesus' teaching and following the way he related to people is going to op open up different doors in their lives. I think one of the thing is, is is simply finding a people group where there's a need and yeah. and uh at soldiers of the cross um when finney crowville has taught the evangelism class there that's one of the things we've done is listed off and there's in any community there's all kinds of things there's there's um there's uh student mentoring programs where you can mentor a middle upper upper uh a middle or high school student there's immigrant immigrant groups there's esl classes there's pregnancy crisis centers. There's just lots of different ways. There's weight loss groups, um, people who want to be free from pornography, and just lots of opportunities to engage people around us who have, have needs and start just showing them Jesus' love and bringing an example of and, 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 the, and speaking the truth into their lives and teaching them how to follow Jesus. And so everybody is going to have to do is look at their situation and listen to Jesus, allow him to lay a burden on their heart and begin to do something. Um, yeah, just begin to engage. Um, and and that's, that's a journey um, for each person. But I think that's the important thing is, is, first of all, to realize this is something about following Jesus, not following us here. They, hopefully there's things they can learn. But to find, it, find where are the needs around them and then begin to do something about it. And, and God will lead and grow that just like he's doing here. I don't, I don't know where all this is going to go, but I feel like God has been working in my life, helping me to learn a lot about following him. And he's doing things in the, in the world around us through it. Yeah. 
And this is yeah. where I bring in, I've been talking to Bill about Soldiers of the Cross in a practical way, doing it in Chambersburg, bringing people in that are interested in trying to do a ministry in their little town. Come here and there are three places right now, Tidings of Peace in York, the West Side Fellowship is beginning in Hagerstown and we're trying this here. Now there's mm -hmm. other things in this area that I'm not thinking about and that's not to exclude them, but there are some things going on and if we can bring somebody from Topeka, mm -hmm. Iowa and give them a week where they walk through what we're doing yeah. here, maybe it will give them some ideas. Mm -hmm. But own it. You mm -hmm. have to do it. Uh, you know, thinking about doing it will not get it done. You yeah. know that Nike commercial, just do it. <laughs> That's what we need. Yeah. When Conrad Grebel felt the need, he stood up and said, I disagree. We have to learn that boldness. Mm -hmm. And if we don't have that boldness, because we come from the farm. I didn't come from a the farm. These guys might have. <laughs> but if you come from the farm and you're afraid to talk to people, that's going to be the hardest thing. My friend Brian Otto, who's down in Grandview, Texas, ex-Amishman, said, I don't know how to do this. And I turned to him and I said, hi, my name's Patrick. Tell me about yourself. <laughs> and he took that and I watched him teach other people that. And that's actually how it's done. You just start talking to people and people will tell you what they need. Yeah. Give them 15 minutes and they'll tell you how they need money or, or whatever it is. <laughs> but you'll learn about the person if you listen. And mm -hmm. I don't seem like I listen, but I listen attentively. Mm -hmm. I just don't appear that way sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Wow. Have you seen positive results from this work? And when will you think you have reached success, I guess you could say? Bill is here. When I first met him, he wasn't going to do it. Hmm. It wasn't and here in you his are. life, and here he is. Yeah. And uh, the torch has been passed. I always said that we're to go and get just one person. And th in our original conversations with the churches, they said, well, how can we count the, call count the converts? And I said, mm -hmm. well, I don't think we are supposed to count the converts. It says that we should make sure that what we teach them counts according to the scriptures, first of all. Second of all, we're going after one convert. Now that you got one, me. Let's mm -hmm. go for the second one. So it's already a success mm -hmm. from the beginning. <laughs> yeah. Here's number two. <laughs> now that we got two, let's go get three. And that's how it exponentially grows. That's the beauty of discipleship mm -hmm. right there. Wow. And who would have thought that a, a street thug like myself would be working with uh, a gentleman from Tennessee who had Anabaptist um, attractions or living in Anabaptist life and you mm -hmm. know that you put the two of us together and we're diametrically different <laughs> he's type A personality and I'm type B <laughs> and somehow I had to learn the strengths of my life and the weaknesses in my life and he did too and I realized that when I pushed I needed to not push and let him push like this is a reciprocal agreement and mm -hmm. we learn each other the more we're together yeah and yeah. You know, if it was ego involved, then I would push when he needed to push, and then we would butt heads. Mm -hmm. And I think what draws us together is we've learned each other's weaknesses, and we've not pointed them out. But I, mm -hmm. I believe that we've looked at each other's strengths and we amplify each other. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Anything else y'all would like to share? As far as fruit and success, um, like like I shared earlier, the uh, the harvest is God's. My, my responsibility is to sow. And so if, for myself, for one, I feel like there's success happening when we, as, as people who are already Christians, are growing and being challenged. Mm -hmm. um, when people, that's, guess, that's my big concern, is that people see Jesus, that they encounter Jesus. And there's a mm -hmm. testimony, whether they accept it and allow it all to change their lives or not, but that there's a testimony that they see Jesus and what's happening in our lives. And long term what my my dream is is to see a group of of people who are living out the kingdom of god living in town here and that growing um bringing in indigenous people to increase that where chambersburg is full of where you can't walk a block without walking past somebody's house that is part of the kingdom of god that's that's my that's my dream whether or not that's the role god has for this room and for our inaction here um i don't know and i'm i want to be fine with whatever uh, however large or however small the thing he wants us to do, but um, that's for me. That success is when I'm taking the next step 
in the challenge God puts in front of me to grow personally. And when there's a witness going out that, that people are meeting Jesus here. That's, that's yeah, that would, that's amazing. Well, maybe we'll come back in a year or two or three and yeah. do another episode with y'all and see where things are at. Thanks, y'all, for, Thank for joining us for this yeah. episode. This yeah. has been wonderful. I really Thank enjoyed you. it. Mm-hmm. Anyway, to get in touch with me, www.harken, H-E-A-R-K-E-N, house.org. Email me at patrick at harkenhouse.org. Bill is billtoteach at gmail.com.